Oh, hey. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a uh, cigar review with a whiskey review also. Very excited. I found my favorite whiskey. My new favorite whiskey. God, they're all my favorites, actually. Um, <laughs> my new favorite whiskey uh, from Portland, Oregon. It's called Westward Single Malt American Blended Whiskey. It's a whole different beast than anything that you've ever had. So uh, I'm going to crack open a little bit of that. We're going to have a little bit of a stog. Sit back. Join me. We're just... You know, enjoy the sounds. Um, I'm gonna light this bad boy up in my last video, my campfire video. This is the one that we're gonna be doing a review on. Uh, it's the Gurkha Centurion. Now, they don't spell Centurion like you actually would, so you have to look for it on the proper channels. Maybe Cigars International. Centurion spelled C E N as in November, T U R I A N. It's not the Roman spelling, so uh, let's uh, let's crack this open and light it up here. Just kind of chewing on it a little bit makes it easier to moisten. Easier to moisten. <laughs> Just kind of chewing on it a little bit makes it easier to uh, to cut. Now this time, so this is a torpedo shape, as you can see, you can tell by the tapered ends here, torpedo shape. And this is the closed off end that I'm going to cut. So usually I'd use like a regular, a regular guillotine cutter. Today, I have my. Uh, my V cutter, which is uh, I don't know. You know, we're gonna we're gonna see, we're gonna see. So, you know, just tasting it right off the top here, I get uh, get earthy notes. You know, it kind of just tastes like the ground that I came out of, right? Which is fine. That's how it's supposed to taste. It's not unpleasant. Like you ever had a raw mushroom? It's not like, it's not unpleasant. Let's uh, let's cut that off here. Oh yeah, that worked a lot better than I thought it would. That that cut it right there. I might just have to use that every time. Hmm. <laughs> it's got a good dry pull too. It's again more earth, a little bit of sweet grass. Super tasty, really excited about this one. So the one in my uh, in my campfire video uh, lost its like its integrity a little bit because I left it in my travel humidor. So uh, you know, it dried out. It dried out a little bit. It wasn't as it's not as tasty as it could be. Anyways, and when you're toasting, of course, you want to toast the end here, but you want to keep your torch. Okay, it's working this time. <laughs> you want to keep your torch far from it, just so that it catches that right there. So that it catches like the edge of the heat. You don't want to burn it. Because if you bring if you bring the flames towards the edge too close, it burns it and all you taste is char and you get you don't get any of the flavor of the tobacco. So here we go. Mmm. Just off the top I get uh hmm. I don't know yet. A little bit 
this stone fruit it kind of eases more into like a leathery mm, I don't know it's complex which makes Gurkha like super that's anything from Gurkhas can be mm, great because all their flavors are, are super complex they're uh, combined in ways that no no Gurkha stick is is the same which I just adore I love it so much and their bands are cool look at that, look at that band right there yeah <laughs> alright I'm gonna have a couple more puffs of this alright and now I need some whiskey so we're gonna break out this uh, it's called Westward it's a good look at the label right there it's beautiful it's got a beautiful bottle too um, love the edges it's, it's kind of not really like any other bottle that I've seen out there um, over the front of it, it says True Northwest, which uh, <laughs> I am so into. All that rain and all those trees. Mm. Currently, I live in the desert, and it's uh, it's just so hot. <laughs> it's just so hot. However, it makes for good smoking weather. Um, but I had a chance to visit Portland very recently. Uh, and they were uh, doing tastings in the airport. So, naturally, being the whiskey cigar guy that I am, I had to get a tasting before I got on my plane back home. <sighs> I almost bought a bottle there, but I didn't have enough room in my carry-on. It's a shame. It's a shame, but I poured myself some. So, here we go. Slancha, look at that color. Just beautiful. All right. A little bit of that. Just kind of revel in it. Mm. It's not a burn. Not like a. It's not like a burn like a lot of bourbons would have. A little lower class, a little lower class bourbons. Not to say that this is a lower class bourbon. If anyone from Westward is watching me, probably not. But. Just to say, uh, it's delicious. It's fantastic. It's so good. It's um, on the nose. It's like sweet, oaky, got a little caramel. Vanilla. Some of the lighter stone fruit, maybe like peach. Ah, it's fantastic with this right here. Mm. So when you're uh, when you're tasting cigars and whiskey for the flavor, I'm a little bit new to it. I've been smoking cigars for a few years now, um, but I've I've gotten more into I guess the dynamics of different whiskeys and uh, and cigars particularly together over the last couple months, particularly over the quarantine. Haven't had a lot to do except for drink and smoke and write, but we'll get into that later. Um, but what I've found is that the best way to get the best uh, combination of flavors is you take a puff, take another one, and you take one more. So you get the whole even burn there. You get all of that tobacco flavor. Now what I like to do, I just kind of discovered, but I've been doing this now for you know, since I've been since I've been doing this, <laughs> is that you kind of take a deep inhale as you bring the glass to you. Take a little bite, just like a little nip, and then exhale. Gets 
covers the entire body. And then, mmm. Love that burn. It's not a burn. It's more of... It's more of a simmer. <laughs> more of a simmer, just like on the top of your mouth. On the top of your fucking mouth right here, right? Just like, just right behind your teeth. Mmm. It's just delicious. So, uh, I'm gonna smoke this down. I'm gonna go outside a little bit so that I don't, uh, I don't get too much smoke inside. And, um, and uh, I'll meet you guys back here at this when I'm done with the first third. Cool. Now, you can't see me, but I know you can hear me. I just have to tell you about this other flavor that I discovered. It's just like super chocolatey. It's just like the silken, like chocolate, like something that you would lick off of a chocolatier spoon <laughs> on this cigar here. It's so good. It's so good. All right. I'm just gonna enjoy the moon here for a second. And we're back. I know you didn't go anywhere. I went somewhere probably for about half an hour. <laughs> just like sitting and staring at stuff. I'll figure out some way to put like, I don't know, some little nice interval in between the thirds. But this is where we're at now. This is where we're at. This is the bottom third. Uh, bottom fifth, something like that. You know what? It's still good. It's still, it's still pretty freaking tasty. I uh, like to qualify this part of the stog as uh, like the meaty part. There's not like the flavor. So <laughs> the flavor that you get from this this back end, this very back end, is just all savory. There's no like sweet or anything. It's kind of like the char. It's kind of like the meat that you would have on a barbecue that you know you kind of fucked up as the barbecue master. <laughs> so you eat it for yourself. That's what I would qualify this as. So we're just going to call this the meaty part from now on. The meat. You say the middle is the meat, but the middle's kind of like... Oh, man. You ever just make stuff up as you go? Ugh. The middle... would be like... the main course. And that doesn't have any different description than what it would be. <laughs> so I'm going to think about it. And I'll get back to you in the next video. Uh, but that, that, in my time smoking cigars, has been what uh, older cigar smokers have quantified as the tastiest part of the cigar. I'm not convinced. I'm just not convinced. But I'm not unconvinced, if that makes sense. It doesn't. It doesn't, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm not unconvinced that the meat is necessarily not the best part of the cigar. I feel like context is probably involved with that because the only part that I've that I've looked for and smoked this part that I've left in an ashtray has been towards the end of some wild party 
at 3.47 in the morning, and then, you know, the cops roll around the corner, and they look around the party, and you actually hear of them whisper to the other one, this is fucking awesome. That's what that I that is what I equate this part of the cigar with. That's a story for a different time. Perhaps I'll make a whole other video about that story. That would be a good idea. Huh. Edits aside. Gurkha Centurion. Ten out of ten. Would smoke again fantastic all through the thirds or the fifths however we're gonna however we're gonna equate that oh uh westward single malt american whiskey single malt american whiskey i know it's usually single malt scotch but it's single malt american blended whiskey hmm. i like it i love it i want some more of it. I know. I had to. I didn't have to. I chose to. Anyways. Here's the last bite of my whiskey for tonight. Slotch it to you. Mmm. It's so good. Highly recommended. Highly recommended. I'm going to wrap this here up. And uh, we'll see you next time. Stay nerdy.